Hello, this is Gareth from the iNote team. It is my great pleasure to introduce Geronimo. We're going to talk about Moodle from the trenches and the obstacles of a re-implementation. Um, on behalf of the iMoodle team and myself, Cara, thank you so much for pretending the time to put the presentation together and for the sources and words that you're going to say. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gary, for the introduction. The original name of the presentation was Improving Moodle Usage in a Brazilian University, but we thought that uh, a little spicing on the uh, title of the speak was uh, interesting because it uh, really involved a, a little battle to get to the point that we are today in this uh, case study. So this work uh, is presented by me and Matheus, but he isn't online right now. He's having some issues with his connection. I don't think that he'll get on time. Uh, but we'll talk about uh, almost everything that we had planned. So what are we going to talk about in this presentation? This presentation uh, uh, is an attempt to share a little of our experience in uh, literally uh, going from a Moodle site already implemented uh, going back to the scratch board because of many problems that I will talk about later and going from zero to a fully uh, supported and working Moodle platform as of now. Uh, the first thing, why re-implement? In this case, uh, we were working uh, in two uh, case studies. One was uh, what uh, Matheus was going to talk about and mine that were very similar. Um, basically, we had outdated Moodle installations and um, besides uh, the problems with the outdated, there were many flaws uh, in the installation and the lack of uh, usage from teachers and students was uh, very great. So we decided to go back from zero and start re-implementing. Uh, we saw it as a different view from a simple Moodle implementation uh, because many people uh, had already misconceptions or bad experience with Moodle, so we had to break some barriers to get to where where we are right now. Uh, first thing that we would like to talk about, we are from Brazil. And most of the time when we say Brazil, people remember things like Carnaval or sports like soccer, but sometimes people don't realize uh, in the case of Moodle that Moodle is very popular in Brazil. It's the Brazil is the third uh, country in the world with most users, most sites of uh, you of Moodle installs, and we have a really active community of translators, developers, and most of our yeah, most people uh, don't really know about these details, but. Um, most of our federal universities use Moodle. We don't uh, really uh, see a lot of Blackboard or now we are seeing some people using Canvas. It's getting quite a bit popular, but still I, I would say that 9% of our uh, federal universities uh, use Moodle and the majority of the private institu institutions to use Moodle. That's uh, quite a, a feature, uh, although we don't have as many institutions as there are in other countries. Uh, I think that if we look at the percentage there, that uh, this, of these institutions that use Moodle, uh, it's quite big. So it's really impre impressive. And in my case specifically, I work at the Federal University of Pelotas. It's Pelotas um, city, a small city in the South Brazil, 
that has about five universities. All of them work with Moodle. Uh, my case specifically, I work with UFPEL. We have about we had about twelve thousand users roughly, and for a long time, for all the the normal courses, uh, it was a bit of a flashback. Uh, I don't know if people will still remember how Moodle 1.9 was, but that was the face of our uh, of our Moodle. Uh, okay, Carrie, I, I can provide a copy of that. And our Moodle was uh, we had separated Moodles for only online learning. That was my first uh, job when I became a worker at UFPEL that we had uh, already updated to Moodle 2.1. Uh, I think that was the first one that we worked on after the 1.9 series, but uh, the local courses, uh, the regular courses of the university, the on-site courses, we're still uh, two to three years ago, still using Moodle 1.9, uh, really outdated with many uh, problems. We had like uh, open registration. Anyone could uh, access the Moodle and create an, an user. So we had lots of spammers. Really, it was an abundance of it. Uh, we had some hackers that tried to gain access in our Moodle. Uh, we had uh, a lot of plugins that were simply unusable, and we had so much trouble that we thought that there was no solution for uh, this problem. Uh, literally, although it was working, it wasn't re uh, the best situation that should be. It was low. It was uh, in a machine that wasn't really a server. It was a powered desktop with uh, good, uh, some good resources, but uh, it was underdimensioned for 1,200 students and teachers. It was simply um, a tool that people could use, but uh, decided not to use or use as little as possible. So we had a big challenge there. The first thing that we decided was uh, to try to update the system. Uh, it wasn't possible. There was some hard-coded changes in the PHP codes that broke every attempt that we tried to uh, solve this issue of updating Moodle. So we decided, OK, let's go from zero. We are going to start from scratch, let's go from Moodle, I think that was 2.2 at, at the time, uh, to work on that. We did a new install. Uh, this uh, is an example of a uh, classroom in our Moodle that already uh, had begun to take shape. Today, we are already using another template, uh, another uh, system. It's more clean, more minimalistic look, uh, I would say. Uh, but the main thing was that jump from from 1.9 uh, to, to, to the 2 series. Uh, we had a great problem with that uh, in the first moment because some people, although they didn't like 1.9, they knew how to use it and they felt a uh, kind of barrier and didn't want to use Moodle uh, from the two series. Uh, but we saw that from our point of view, the technical point of view, there were many advantages. One of the main was that from one semester to another, there, were, there was almost 30% savings in storage space uh, translating uh, it would grow 30% less than it would grow in the 1.9 series. So that was uh, one of the defining moments that we said, okay, there is no turning back. We are going to deactivate this old Moodle 
and start working on this and uh, this is the best way to work from now. Uh, but from all this uh, abandon of the 1.9 model, we had uh, created an issue. Most of our uh, teachers preferred to use email and Facebook as a di distance learning environment instead of Moodle. Uh, they thought it was easier. Uh, they already had an account on Facebook. They just created a group for their, their cl classroom and uh, invited the students over. But although I think that Facebook has the potential to be also uh, an, a tool in the educational environment, I don't think that it is uh, adequate to use Facebook as the only tool. Uh, and email too. Uh, email is just, uh, you have a communication uh, that is asynchronous. You send files, you receive files, and that's it. It's hard to establish a long uh, lasting communication. It's hard to work on another type of activity and i don't think that uh, it's the goal of uh, email to be an environment to learn it's mainly to exchange files and text and on facebook we have already uh, synchronous communication uh, we may have chat but we don't have uh, educational tools and you don't have either uh, control of how the student is interacting on facebook you don't know if he access the file, if he has any doubts, how he will uh, go on about his doubts to you. You can say, oh, there is a forum. You go and put your doubts on the forum. Don't call me on the message or in Facebook. So we see that the, the forum, the style of teaching that use Facebook isn't really uh, structured. It's more like uh, I give information to the students and I hope that they follow the instructions that I give, but they can be really lost. And another thing that's important, you can't really say to a student, oh, you are going to study at, your, at our university. Okay, you are obliged to have an account on Facebook. That's really, um, the, that's not legal. Uh, from our point of view. And we used many of these arguments to say that Moodle was the best option, but still there was a lot of resistance. So first thing we started to work uh, in our crew itself, uh, we had uh, a lot of changes uh, in who worked with Moodle in our institution do during a, a long time, but today we have two Moodle administrators that handle the small cases and uh, problems with tools and Moodle itself. One Moodle developer that integrates Moodle with the systems of our university and one server, server administrator, that's me, that works on backup and some WPO web uh, performance optimization and yeah yeah <laughs> the situation that gareth says is very uh, usual people love to chat and love facebook because facebook allows you to to chat but not always the chat will be with uh, a learning objective so you start to talk about the lessons and you go all the way to personal things and sometimes people are there in the space that you created on Facebook, but uh, are really lost in terms of learning uh, objectives. Yeah, Moodle is, is the best way to achieve a structure, a platform that really guides you, give the roadmap to learning. So it's really important that we have uh, Moodle as this bridge between the knowledge and the student. 
uh, our infrastructure to replace that uh, old desktop uh, powered uh, mixed server that was miracle mi miraculously yeah uh, that was running the model at the time uh, we now have an a structure of a proprietary cloud that we would call in English Ufpel cloud that hosts Moodle. Uh, before we had one computer with the database, with the uh, Moodle data, with the web server running. Now we can uh, scale the, the machine. So if our demand grows, we can uh, separate uh, the service uh, inside that. But from now, uh, for now, it's working uh quite good actually and we don't have any complaints about speed uh, from Moodle in about two years i think uh, both speed and uh, av availability and of course we have one backup server that uh, guarantees uh, guarantees that if we have a trouble in the main server we we will be able to solve it and one of the main things that we saw uh, is that I can't just convince the teacher, oh, Moodle, like Gareth said, can guide learning. But how are you going to guide learning? Uh, we have a lot of resistance with computer itself from some teachers that were, were not uh, intimate with this technology and uh, have uh, trouble issues and don't really uh, get uh, get on easily with these concepts so uh, after much talking we started uh, the, we are going to the edition so about three years ago with uh, on on site uh, Moodle course and one of the uh, one of the main methodology in this course is work uh, like you uh, work using the Pareto principle. For those who don't uh, doesn't know the Pareto principle, Pareto principle means that 20% of your effort means 80% of your results. Uh, in our case specifically, we started seeing that most of the teachers wanted to use like 20% of the Moodle and that would uh, uh, be a success in their view. So we mapped these resources that were most used uh, through the, the statistics, statistics on Moodle and started uh, working on it. Yeah, most people know the 80-20 rule, but the, don't know that uh, it was a mathematician, uh, Pareto, I don't remember his first name but it's quite a quite interesting that it is applicable to anything almost in the the world and we started using that in our course uh, we had the opportunity to uh, teach this course that translating to english would be um, a capacitation course of teachers in Moodle platform. Uh, and it was uh, administered by me, uh, João, Rafael, and Rodrigo. Uh, the idea was that we saw that uh, short courses, unfortunately, didn't cover enough ground for those teachers with uh, more problems or more issues with computer. So we thought about uh, 40 hours of activities uh, between online and on-site activities to the teachers to uh, really use Moodle. We had already done like courses of two to four hours, but we barely uh, scratched the surface of Moodle. We um, didn't get uh, really deep in the tools that they thought that was valuable. So we thought that uh, or we go all the way or we wouldn't change the landscape of our issue. So the first thing that we got uh, got to work on was the access. Uh, before, 
we had just that open system that anybody put their 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 name there. There was no uh, capture. There wasn't uh, any type of security measure, so it was really weak. And we worked on an integration with our, uh, with the main system in our university that's called uh, Cobalto. And after that, we now have a system that automatically, when a new student or teacher gives his info to the system, creates a new user in Moodle with the data he's providing if he is indeed in the university. If he isn't, he will have to contact us and uh, say why he wants to join the, the Moodle. Sometimes we have uh, ex ex exchange students or foreign teachers come to the university, so we still have uh, one or two situations where we have to do uh, the manual access. Uh, other things about it that we've created a custom uh, login page that has a, a section with frequent, frequently asked questions uh, that covers most of the first steps in Moodle so people uh, don't get around Moodle and really don't see how to use it. Uh, we had an issue that we had um, but in Moodle, we had the frequently uh, already had the uh, frequently asked questions in Moodle and had a book about Moodle that was produced in our universe. But the book itself was outdated because it's still related to the 1.9 series, and we ended up uh, uh, don't we didn't have more the work crew that worked in that book. So we decided to go uh, and deliver the instructions in Moodle so we could update it if it was needed more easily. Uh, that solved a lot of issues. It was the, the first great battle. Then we had uh, a really, um, I think it's a simple issue, but it was really recurring issue people with problem with the password. So uh, there were some cases where the person uh, entered Moodle and one week from there, doesn't know the, his password and would contact us and say that Moodle doesn't work, it sucks, blah, 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 blah. So we had to work on that. We did the video tutorials. We uh, simplified the procedure of changing the password. We started using templates and candid messages to contact uh, these students and already, oh, you have a trouble with your password. We ask you your full name, your register number, everything that we need, it's already there. The person answered it and we got back to them. In most cases, uh, within 24 hours, that's uh, the... I think 90% of our cases, uh, of our case, we still we we can answer in that uh, frame, uh, uh, in that time frame. We still have some issues because some students have trouble answering mail, so we have to call and uh, work uh, over the telephone and give instructions. But at the end of the day, it was an issue that we almost uh, solved it. It wasn't solved because people still have troubles with computer itself. So we are still get a lot of complaints about that, but we are uh, answering faster and faster each time. Uh, and we are working now to integrate the integrate completely the password of Moodle with our academic system uh, that I already said, Cobalto. So if people have trouble in Moodle, they can just reset their password in Cobalto and it will be over. Yeah, that will make life so much easier for us, but we will create a problem with the people in Cobalto, but that's, will be, that will be the issue, unfortunately. And going for the tools itself, 
uh, the first two that we saw that everyone, almost everyone in Moodle used it was forum. When you work with forum in Moodle, um, we started to, to see that most teachers just wanted a place that they could talk and uh, send and receive files from the, the students. And this was really complicated at uh, a point because some of the teachers just knew how to use the forum because, you know, you create a new classroom, classroom in Moodle, there is already a forum created. So they thought that was the only tool that they could use. And that became really an issue. We discovered it uh, quite a, a bit, uh, uh, quite a, a long time ago because some teachers were uh, complaining that we they imported the material from other uh, classroom that they already gave in uh, another semester. Uh, there was nothing there, and we uh, imported, reimported, and, uh, and for us was everything okay. But then we finally saw that all the material that they were posting was inside the forum. So we had to teach about how to use the forum, why to use the forum. Uh, I already put as a resource in the in the space in iMoot, the Moodle tool guide for teachers, that it's a space, uh, it's a tool uh, created by Joyce uh, Seitzinger that lists all the tools uh, within Moodle. And it shows the teachers how do they work and what can be accomplished with each tool. So that was already a big step uh, towards the right usage of the forum. Next was the tasks. Uh, we really saw um, a need for the teacher to use this because most of the teachers, although we don't comply with it, uh, say that they want to use Moodle just to receive files. Uh, but at the same time, they were skeptical that Moodle was a safe environment to do that. They were thinking, oh, um, a student can send a file wrong, can send a file in, uh, where another student su should send his file. And we did a lot of work uh, inside the, the test activity because we wanted to assure the teacher that he could work with, without any issue on this, uh, on this tool. Um, we had uh, great feedback about this. Most of the teachers that did the course now are using the, the task tool to receive files from students. Uh, they think it's very easy. They already use the feedback to give instant feedback or at least a faster feedback to the student. And I don't know, we managed to uh, break that pre prejudice that had with the, oh, two is a, this tool isn't safe. I will still ask, I will, I will use Moodle, but I will ask them to send the files to me by mail. So most of the teachers got that right, and we are very ha happy about that. Uh, files, we had, as we said before, with um, the forum issue, uh, most of our teachers didn't know how to work with files within Moodle. Uh, they used the wrong tools all over the place. So we sat down and we are going to teach you all the ways that you can embed files in Moodle. Uh, we had some issues also with the size permitted because of our constraints uh, of physical hardware. Uh, we limited uh, in the old Moodle, I think it was five or 10 megabytes. Then we, but now we are already at 100 megabytes thanks to the Moodle storage system, we can rely more on that. And 
Besides that, we implemented the repository of Google Drive and Dropbox so people can upload their files if they are too big, like one gigabyte or two gigabytes uh, in their private uh, file repository and share within Moodle for the students, for the teacher uh, to see. Um, I think that most of the teachers uh, are now relying on, on this feature of Moodle. Some of them too much. Some of them use Moodle just to, oh, I'm going to send files, 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 files for my, <laughs> my student, but don't get around to using uh, other tools. But we yeah, are slowly uh, going into the right direction. So uh, I was very happy to uh to see that teachers now uh have a notion oh another problem that we had uh, is that um, we had an issue about uh people don't knowing about which types of file you can put on moodle uh so we had to talk about that any type of file you can put on moodle you can work with that and uh, yeah, and some of the things we talked about uh, to them, uh, it was really interesting uh, that what Kev has highlighted is that most of the files that they want to put on Moodle, they could get it smaller. If you want to put like a Word file, you could convert it to PDF and make it small. You want to put uh, a photo, uh, photo uh, in it you could get this photo and reduce it the size you could change the um, you could change the format you could change the resolution uh, yeah you, you can work with mime types so uh, there in Moodle 1.9 we still saw some things of using image to reduce uh, images compact nowadays we don't have this kind of issue anymore the, most of the time pictures aren't really or trouble but when you work with visuals uh, and sound most of the time we have a bigger issue so it's really it's really uh, still a uh, a little bit of a uh, trouble, but isn't something that uh, the teachers have that, oh, I can't put any file on Moodle, or I can't put a, 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 a specifically type uh, in Moodle. So we are working on having the most space and knowing the teacher how to put the right content on Moodle. Uh, another problem that was related to files is that some teachers, because of the old limit, uh, decided it was better to put, to put third-part images and links and files inside their classroom in Moodle. And that really became a technical issue because some of the courses uh, began to take more than five minutes to load. You don't really have an experience to a student when you get to a classroom, online classroom, and it gets five minutes to load the classroom, it was like impossible to use. So we had to get uh, in each classroom, we started to use some web performance opt optimization techniques using uh, Firebug and uh, the Wise Low and some other measuring uh, performance uh, tools. And we started seeing that most of the time the problem wasn't Moodle itself. It was people using resources from third party sites and those sites uh, having an issue to load. So we started to educate our teachers to use uh, the least amount of uh, third part, third uh, part hosted files in their um, Moodle course. Uh, like another example that we like to give is do not embed all the videos from YouTube in your main page. Create URL, create resources, even links to 
the video itself uh, if it isn't uh, the main uh, attra uh, attractive in the in that section so that made the whole experience for the student to load the page and have the content faster it's better i could give another talk specifically about web optimization because it's the area that i love yay but the main issue is that most of the time uh a lag uh slow slow speed that uh slow loading times slower than uh, 10 seconds already make uh, people uh, give up or be anxious or be sad about the tool that they are using and that translates to Moodle and any other web pages uh, okay and the last uh, thing that we really worked on was configuring the environment we saw a lot of teachers thinking that Moodle was that monolithic thing that you can't really change. We wanted to go out there and say, no, you can have your Moodle, your course, your face, let's say. So uh, so we started showing them the possibilities of integrating uh, Twitter, integrating Facebook, integrating RSS, uh, using one header, two header, using banners, using one column, two columns, uh, changing the uh, language. It was really uh, a benef uh, a really good issue to tackle uh, because it showed uh, exp uh, expensive courses that needed or would be uh, better if they were if, if with the environment all in a foreign language, in a, a foreign language, let's say, an English teacher uh, wants to teach the the, te the using Moodle. Uh, we saw it. I think that was the Spanish, the German, the French, and the English package. So this teacher could oh okay my course will be in English. The rest of the Moodle can remain Portuguese. Okay, that's the our native language. But in our course, uh, in my course, it will be an immersive experience. I'm going to get on that. I'm going to work on that. And that was it. Uh, we also had some tiny issues uh, with the translation. We had to work on that because some like we had, I remember that was untranslated at the time, the, the sentence, my courses and people, my courses isn't Portuguese. Nobody understood what was my courses. Oh my God, uh, Moodle 1.9 was so much better. I I knew everything that was about it. So uh, in about one day, uh, I was responsible for that part. Uh, I went in, in in the Amos community. I saw the tutorials. I worked with the Brazilian community to translate uh, some expressions and i think at this time uh, we have already 200 the expressions that was uh, the best uh, that that 200 expressions that were translated by our crew so i think that for the small size of our crew that was really uh, a good uh, a good result uh, at this time, but uh, I really wanted to want to work more on translations because although my English, you you can see it's a little bit rusty to speak. I have no issue with the writing and uh, with the writing and translating. So uh, I just need a little bit more time to work on that. But it was a great experience to work with the Moodle community from Brazil and other places. Uh, another issue that this one we are still uh, uh, facing is that we don't have a lot of uh, servers, just the, the cloud that isn't really hosted by our crew. It's uh, another crew that uh, manages the cloud itself. So we don't uh, have the opportunity to work at this moment with the 
uh, big blue button or other uh, tools like that. So we started using from last semester the web RTC model uh, for Moodle for video conference that was made in Brazil by uh, someone at UFSC, the Federal University of Santa Catarina. Uh, it was, it's a really good uh, tool because it's really integrated to Moodle and you don't have to uh, configure anything. You don't have to have any extra resource as most of the communication is peer to peer. We, at, at the time, uh, our measurements say that maybe this will be the official tool for video conference inside Moodle. Uh, it's still uh, in beta stages, but for our need at the moment, it's solving most of the issue. Most of the issues it allows teachers and students to communicate with video, with audio, and with files with uh, not uh, a lot of barriers. Uh, besides some bugs in the interface and uh, not being translated at all, but uh, we want to give back to the community and work in in that uh, to also this year, if possible. Uh, as we already said, uh, I jump jumped on the gun and talked about the translation effort that we are doing some translation from English to Brazilian Portuguese, and it's been a good experience to exchange uh, experience with people from all all the Brazil uh, in this process and. Um, I talk about a little bit uh, more about translation if I have time, but okay. And it's still in the way how to uh, how to instruct people. We ended ended up uh, creating a micro mini video series that could be translated to Moodle, simple, fast, and practical. We did. It would be practical. Uh, a little grammar mistake, but I will. Okay, thanks, Teresa, for the for being here. Uh, if you want, just see the rest of the recording later. And all these videos, we had the goal to make them short, like two to three minutes. And although this, okay, uh, and on this videos we talked about the best issues the the most uh, frequent issues within our Moodle site uh, so uh, so it really had a wonderful feedback because we saw that uh, the video had uh, a deeper uh, connection with people than the the text and the frequent asked questions. Um, the other thing that we worked on was translating the subtitles from Moodle he headquarters videos. So some videos still, I think that more than two or three, uh, we already translated, but we are still working on the uh, decent workflow. So, so not only our university translate, but everybody translate the closed caption from these videos. Unfortunately, there isn't uh, in place in Amos or other translation tool officially at this time to translate subtitles. So it's more uh, a work uh, in, in progress. Uh, I already told about the Moodle tool guide that was the, uh, let's say, outside of the Pareto principle that was the main help to work with all the tools. Although we talked about all the tools in the course, we didn't have uh, uh, the time to work as deep as we could, uh, as we should uh, to teach all the tools. We focus on the most used and the Moodle tool guide was really helpful. As a final feedback, we had most of 
90% of our course participants of our teachers in our university that already participate on this course using Moodle as of now. So if most of the person that goes on to work in, in that course, they go back and say, oh, Moodle is good. We are going to work on that. And where to go from here, we are going on a road to uh, where we want to 100% uh, of our teachers have the training or have the resource to work on Moodle. And we want to focus uh, each time more in global solutions. Uh, that means not only solving the troubles inside our university, but solving the trouble of uh, other university or other uh, uh, universe that use uh, Moodle in Portuguese and so on. And finally, uh, I open to questions if there is any. Hi, Drago. Gareth and our team, thank you for a really feature packed and uh, different perspective presentation. I mean, thank you for putting so much time in. I just wait for a carry on to put some in the questions. Uh, I know that I do. I mean, I'm thinking about with the translation, certainly with with teachers getting teaching the teachers and then, then the students, then you have sort of the domino effect of one person does it, then it all then expands out. Um, certainly with the plugins, have you heard of using Amos? The, the tool? Yeah, I use the Amos as the official uh, translation tool uh, uh, of the Moodle package for uh, the language language package. It's the mm -hmm. official tool. Uh, but my my goal maybe in the future is to seek a, a way to use some tool, maybe Amos too to work on the subtitle of the videos. Uh, uh -huh. Translate Moodle is already an issue that is tackled. Basically, when we see uh, an issue with translation, uh, uh, I can give you the link, Terry, before, uh, after the, the session, maybe. Uh, or, ah, I can see one second. Uh, Amos Moodle, okay, I'll throw here the translation and it was really interesting that uh, we had a great feedback. That's the uh, that's the link right there, Amos. And we had a great feedback from the community. And we have a simple workflow for these uh, uh, little issues with the language pack, like the teacher or the student says to us, oh, we have this term, or I don't understand that. I go catch that, go to the Amos uh, research, see if it's translated in what version. If it's not translated the string, I'll translate it. It will send to the uh, crew to revise it. Uh, I think that it's uh, Yamina, I don't remember its name, but it's someone from UFSC. That's one of the greatest university here working uh, with Moodle. They have many plugins. They hosted the Moodle Moot Brazil from two or three years ago, the first time that I had the opportunity to go to a Moodle Moot. And they get a feedback in about 24 hours or, oh yes, the manual for Amos. Uh, in our language, we have an ex specific uh, instructions. I don't know if other languages uh, also have that option. So it's really an easy tool that in one or two days, you already uh, can update your language pack and your contribution will resolve your problem and the problem of anyone that's using your language. I mean, I, I've used it, I encourage you to use it also with the plugins. So any plugin on Moodle.org uh, downloaded on the Moodle database can also be translated for Amos. So which is really, really good. Yeah, it's really, really flexible, really fast. I, I don't know, if I've had worked with another translation systems like uh, TransFX, and I think that at this time, 
Amos is really doing a great work with Mudo. All the translating, uh, translate crew is. Uh, I have to congratulate them for a great work within that uh, that tool. Any other questions? Um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I can't think any about thank you. I mean, I think I think more and more impressed by the fact that you took one version. Think, oh no, we're going to go, we're going to go and up a new version. We're going to take a big risk here, and and really go for it and take that huge risk. Because so many people are fearful of change, and to really be convinced that that's the right thing to do, and then start training people again. But saying, look, this new system is really good. It's worthwhile going through this pain for a short term, pain for long term gain. Yeah, it, it was really a rock start. We had many issues. We had a lot of complaints. Uh, people said that uh, it was a mix that we should keep on on the last uh, Moodle. We even said to people, oh, our Moodle now is very ugly. I, I beg to disagree with that just to show you guys uh, what our Moodle as of today, uh, this is the this is the main login page. It's a mm -hmm. customized page. Uh, it isn't the the traditional Moodle page that, as it uh, uh, already has all the implementations that we talked about being integrated with our system and so on. And it it still is a uh, work in progress. We really want to fully integrate Moodle with our academic system so teachers can export grades, import, uh, that sort of stuff. And now I agree with Kerry, but I kind of disagree that it's always hard, hard to change versions. It was hard to change versions because we didn't have a roadmap, we didn't have planning. Uh, the last crew that worked in the uh, abandoned site uh did the job that they could at the moment with the the small crew that they had but they didn't really think about the future now that we have a stable moodle uh install we can uh basically we see that there is a new moodle version we see the difference we just work around test it and upgrade it we have since uh 2.2 .2, i think uh, working in this uh, kind of uh, schedule of uh, updating as often as we can to solve many issues and uh, be uh, have a secure installation. And we ended up uh, having now the Moodle 3.0 and we now have no more issues with Moodle itself. I think that this is one of the signs that Moodle itself uh, became more ma mature, uh, especially after 1.9, 1.8, that were really good at that time. But if we see now in terms of code, resources, uh, tools, there is a huge difference between between the, uh, the two platforms. So now we have uh, a lot to... Uh, an, an easier time to uh, really manage the environment and update it and keep it running as it should be running. Okay, I think there's no more questions, so I'll, I'll stop recording. Thank you. Okay.